Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Ron. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight we're going to talk about a lot of British stuff that none of us like. Oh, wait, that's not true. I do actually. I send Ron stuff all the time where I'm like, what about this one? Um, none but of us we, are British, though. <laughs> none of us are British. Um, I got a story for you later, maybe. Uh, socially distanced as always. I'm in Kansas City, what? Ross in the Northeast, getting ready to duck a hurricane. Hopefully it will stay out in the Atlantic and not touch him or his house. Uh, and Ron oh, is also in the same state as me. We just happen to be two hours, two and a half hours apart. <laughs> say 167 miles from each other. I think so. I think that's what the... Yeah, that's about right. Something like that. Yeah. Two, hour, two hours and 36 minutes exactly. I just looked it up on Google Maps real fast. So um, we didn't in, support In it, which so. vehicle? In, in, in Ron's Land Rover or in the Suburban? <laughs> Probably got a half hour Delta there. I know. There might be. I You do not drive a half hour slower than me. A half hour faster, maybe. <laughs> but there's no way that you're a half hour slower than me. So, um... You didn't update your section, Ross, so it still says New Hampshire, no. Forrester, Glock, Alpha. We, yeah, we we recorded... Uh, Two days ago. <laughs> 48 hours, literally 48 hours ago, so... Yeah! I got nothing, although the uh, the Alpha left and I have a BMW X1 X-Drive 28i in the driveway, so... That was a mouthful, <clears throat> and I all I know is I don't want to drive it's, it. It's a great color. I would love to. It's like it's almost like a nori green, like Lexus GX four sixty color. Nice. Um, I have nothing else to say about it. Continue on. Chris is going to yeah. either rage against the Kansas City Chiefs or no, his like daughter's karaoke. Talking. Yeah, the karaoke machine has been killed. Possibly both. But the eight-year-old stepped in the room and was like, oh, I get to have a conversation. I was like, no, out. Go away. School night. Go to bed. At least the eight-year-old didn't step in and go, I get to do karaoke. Yeah, not not yet. Um, speaking of BMWs, though, I did see one pulled over by the side of the road the other day who looked like he was examining. So, obviously, right lane up against the curb after an intersection. So, like, had just turned right. I'm gonna throw something tonight. Um, had just turned right and was on the passenger side, like examining a wheel, like he'd curb checked it. Here's the best part of the story: hazards were on, so his turn signals do work oh. at the same time together. Mm-hmm. Driver's door was left open in the lane of traffic. Um, his flashes were probably on because he hit so hard they come on automatically. <laughs> <laughs> the <Yep>. European like <laughs> the crash that detection was like yes. <laughs> that was I, I wanted to give him props for the, the the hazards and the blinkers, but he's literally the dry. I wanted to like brush it with the suburban and like just try to yeah. close it, but I was like that's gonna mess up my car. But uh, yeah, I was like very very on brand, sir. You've done one thing correctly, but yeah, you'll do something else that's egregiously horrible and awful. So. Let's talk Land Rovers. All right, because you, um, R- Ross, and I don't don't have them. <laughs> like we don't, not yet. I mean, <laughs> you. It's never too late to start. Um, I, I, it, I walked. Is it? Is it? <laughs> it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's a so, bad habit. It's like an AA meeting you tonight. Introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah. Why don't um, you give everybody your your thirty second introduction and. and uh, a quick brief on your, you know, masochism. And <laughs> um, I I can blame all this on my wife because in 1999, she wanted a Land Rover. She wanted something to haul the kids around in that could get through the snow. We were living in Northern Illinois. The weather was bad all the time. Um, she said, I want to look at a Land Rover. And I said, I'm okay with that because I wasn't a Jeep guy. I was a Chevy truck guy. And uh, mm, we bought hers brand new with like 51 miles on it in March of 99, and we still own it today. Um, hers, you bought hers, her, hers she's got a disco, one. she's got a disco one that was actually yeah. a 1999, so it was like a, in the split year. Yeah, so my screen will um, load eventually, and they'll get to see it. Okay, 
And, it, and what were you driving at the time that you, that you bought? She had a Mazda uh, 626. Awesome. And I had a ZR2 uh, S10. Hell, yeah. A, a four-door or a, a, it, an extended it, cab ZR2? It was the extended cab, short bed, bl- all black on black. It was probably one of the funnest trucks I've had. Those things are still so cool. Like, that is like a a Radwood show stealer these days, yeah. you know? Oh, and, you know, the 31-inch tires and the limited slip in the back, it was just yep. fun. But, I, you know, I you get a car seat. That. It's hard to get a kid in with a car seat. Somebody's got to sit in the jump seat, and that's not me because mm-hmm. I'm too big. Yeah. So, so um, it was a she, Blazer? No, it was an S10. It's a, it's okay. A, um, she told me to stop be- driving hers so much because we were putting so many miles on it and told me to go buy my own if, if I liked it so much. And little did she know that I saw one for sale alongside the road. And so I came home with a white 1997 Disco that had never seen the dirt, 70,000 miles on it, was just beautiful. And three weeks later, I had a lift kit on it and I buried it in the stream. And is lost that, spark, and there it was. Is that the the one you had out in Western Kansas? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. The same truck. Amazing. So, so we we yanked it out of the stream and drug it to the parking lot, and it cranked over and drove it home and dried it out, and um, it was kind of our main vehicle because we kind of kept hers pristine. And it got to the point where I had so many miles on it, and it was so much of a, more of a tractor than an SUV that she was tired <laughs> of riding in it. Um, I mean, for a while, I had Super Swamper tires on it. I mean, Yikes. it, it was just a fun get around. The front differential um, got so sloppy in the spider gears that I had to replace it with a locker. The rear differential exploded on. Just had to. I just had it to was go cheaper. Lockers. It was cheaper. Yeah. Um, we were coming back from. Uh, you, uh, you go e locker, air locker. So I I put an air locker, uh, uh, air B in the back, mm-hmm. and and I was okay with it. It just didn't disengage as fast as I wanted it to, and so okay. in the front I put an Ashcroft. Uh, Lucky Eight was selling it for a while. It's basically out of Britain, oh, yeah. and it it does disengage faster. So, hmm. so yeah, little air compressor, hmm. locking it in. So you've had these two discos for over twenty years. Um, I just recently got rid of the white one. Um, mm. So <laughs> we had so much <laughs> sentimental value, I didn't want to crush it, but I stole all the good parts off it. Took the lockers, okay. took the lift, took the Bilstein seventy one hundred shocks off it. As you, know, you do, just yeah. just yeah. gutted it because everything would go on my new disco that I bought, and so then we're we're debating what to do with it. And Patrice is a college professor, um, and she had a student who bought one and just loved his disco. You know, it was going to be, and then like three weeks later, hit a deer with it and just destroyed the front end. Oh, oh, no. Devastating. And, you know, as a, as a poor college kid, he came in, he was driving his mom's Civic or something and just told her the story, and he was so heartbroken because he didn't have money to fix it or whatever. And yeah, so I said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give that to him. He can piece two together. I said, one of these days, I, was, I told him I was going to call him, and him and his dad were going to show up with a trailer, and they were going to haul it away. Um, um, and so... Yeah. So they did that oh, two years ago, and then the dad got carried away and decided that he was going to put a 350 in it, and you know, so they've been making it a rock buggy ever since. So, oh my god, okay. he told me as soon oh, as god, it's roadworthy, it's coming by my house. So, shit, he better. Yeah, the uh, um. Noah, not so much our, our oldest son, because he kind of knew life before the, the white disco. But the other two, that had been around ever since they were born. They were almost in tears when it left. You know? mm-hmm. We were giving away <laughs> their favorite vehicle. Which so. is always super sad Get for that. the kids. Yeah. Yeah. I but, will uh, say, one of the, uh, 
for, I'm fortunate to say I've driven a lot of things. And one of the vehicles I think about most is I had probably 15 minutes in a, uh, in a, in a disco with the Rover V8 and the five speed mm. and talk about sentimental value after, you know, like what's effectively no time whatsoever. I, I, I get it. Those things have pe- people talk about, you know, charm mm. in the car world and, and there's like a, a pull. So, so and there's where, also, where things you know, really got like crazy a, for us a, is we, we bought our Land Rover, her Land Rover in Chicago and the dealership handed us a brochure for the Chicago Land Rover club and said, you might want to check these guys out. And, and they did fun, you know, fall events in Wisconsin and, and club meetings at restaurants and stuff like that. And what that did for us is all of a sudden now we had this monthly meeting of guys that had modified their Land Rovers. And so it was easy for us to go, hey, we want to do this or that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the first off-roading event when you rip off the whole lower part of the bumper in a mud hole and she's embarrassed and says, I don't want that to happen again. What do we need to do? And I said, we need to buy a bumper like that one. And she was all for it. So they fed our addiction pretty hard. And there was guys in the club with 1993 uh, 110s, you know, and I drove that a couple of times and the stick shift in that was so smooth. You know, I was never a stick shift guy and I was like, you know what, this would be pretty cool. So. Hey, I have a total random aside. Do you happen to know the, the heritage lineage of your last name? by any chance because I grew up in the Hudson Valley and the Lefevre uh, name is it, it has Rampant. you know deep yes. Huguenot <laughs> heritage yes so so in 1709 on Christmas Eve we got off a boat in uh, New York Harbor okay. and uh, William Penn gave us some land in Pennsylvania and mm-hmm. we went to Pennsylvania and turn of the 1900s. Um, my great grandfather moved to Illinois and got some land there. And so we have a ton of Lefevers in Quarryville that are direct relatives of ours, probably pretty much that whole area. So, <laughs> so yeah, the, the Huguenots, okay. you know, that and, whole and exodus somewhere. was us. Okay. I, I chuckle. I'm not really French anymore. I've been here like 300 years. <laughs> I've been here 300 yeah. years. <laughs> Me too. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha Yeah. If we're, if we're doing genealogy tonight, supposedly I have relatives that got off with the Mayflower and then married one of the ones that was already here. They married the Mayflower. Good for them. No, that the boat... The, it was like a it was a i had a native american relative and a uh colonizer relative so same same couple but yeah my parents did all that fun stuff before they went back to ireland so oh my god forever ago now but they went through and like traced lineage and like could find people on through civil war revolutionary war before that deep stuff so i don't know how the on tonight's episode of drunk history yeah (laughs) i yeah, my black coffee and flavored lemon flavored water is definitely doing it for you there, Ross. So, um, Ron, you said you got the first disco stuck. Yeah, we've definitely got the white one stuck. We had to use yes. Kyle's Sierra as an anchor, and I cannot find that picture to save my life. All I can find is the picture of me stuck in the river, which is not helpful. Well, if I was were, down, yes, yeah, so I was behind you. Yep. <laughs> um. That was a good trip. It was a great trip. I, I feel like they, they let us down horribly um, when they didn't tell us to stay in the middle of the water. Because as soon as we migrated towards the shore, it was so muddy, we all got stuck. Yeah. So. We, we will 
blame Kathleen on that because she coached her husband to stay in the middle of the river. Yes. Even, you know, even the, though that's the civil, him hiding the civil over engineer. here yeah. in the bushes behind me. <laughs> Ross, have I shown this picture before? Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm having a weird memory night. Um, so that was that was the first time we off-roaded together, uh, yeah. Ross, is we, we went and explored mm. Western Kansas, which in a day we saw some wild things that I wasn't used to seeing in the state of Kansas. Like I think we finally met up with Ron in the, um, God, what's that place called? It's not Castle Rock, is it? Yeah, it's Castle Rock. I think it's, it yeah, was it's Castle, Castle Rock. Rock. I got, I got yep. all kinds of images tonight. So we had done Mushroom Rock earlier in the day. But yeah, so... Not they're they're big rocks that look like mushrooms, but like this when you think about Kansas and you drive so you to Kansas, should, like you all you ever see is wheat fields. Did shrooms. I didn't do shrooms. I just went to the state park. But, but if you did mushroom rock, you should just say you did shrooms. But that is legal in Kansas. I don't want to get arrested. <laughs> you can run across the border to Missouri. You'll be fine. That's true. I couldn't. It's like I don't think I think mushrooms are only legal in Colorado though. So like it's a much longer you run right now. You spend Probably a lot of time out there. I do spend a lot of time out there. It's just there. <laughs> I didn't do any mushrooms, though. I didn't do anything, actually. <laughs> spent a ton of time out there. So, I had a list of questions so, for you. All right. Let's go through How, real So, quick. total rovers you've had is three? Three. I had three at one time. Actually, I had four because <clears> I had somebody else's for a long-term loan, shall we say. The, the trailer company up in Salina actually bought one for me. They found it on Craigslist. You know, so they, you know, I had a couple Jeeps. They had a H3. They had that thing. And so for a while, it lived at my house. Um, so, yeah. So you had extra Land Rovers? I did. I had a spare. They also had an AEV Jeep with the V8. That was fun. Ooh. But, and that was, that was T.O.? Yeah. Uh, there they are. Their Instagram handles so, hard to remember. Man, AV. Talk about dream companies. AV just they just get it. And and I'm surprised they've been able to hold on because normally the big three will push those guys out. Well, now start doing now it they themselves. Have, now they're putting yeah, they're, parts they're, on factory stuff. Co- <laughs> they got cooperations with GM for the. Colorado, the Canyon, Sierra, mm-hmm. the, oh, the Bison. Yeah, the Bison line. And they also, it's not the same kind of cooperation, but they are working with Ram to do the mm-hmm. prospectors. You know, like they, they're in cahoots. So, my next question for Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan is good. <laughs> uh i because w- you've been all over the place with them now yeah wheeling them all over which, which is your favorite place that you wheel them at because obviously you've been out to moab you've been yeah. to baja you've been all over the the midwest the upper midwest i've i've been to moab with um both disco ones the dark green and the white one um and Moab is probably our favorite just because there's so many different trails so close to town. You can, you know, you can be in the sand, you can be in the rocks, you can be on dirt roads. Um, it's just 14 hours to get there. Um, yeah. That's not bad. We, we did a couple days down in Baja a few years ago. Um, we did, took the kids to Disneyland and Patrice said, well, Hey, while we're out here, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go into Mexico. And she looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, no, I want to jump across the border into Baja and just see what it's like because we're here. Um, and so, you know, State Department papers and passports and, mm-hmm. you know, international driver's license and all that stuff I went through to make sure that we were fully legit because we were going by ourselves. And I had a buddy who probably six months before lived in Arizona, jumped across the border. And so I, I pinged him and said, what do I need to do? You know, <laughs> so he gave me, he gave me a, quite a few pointers and, and, uh, so we, we jumped across, we about 120 miles into Baja for two days and then came back and, and proceeded home after Christmas. And 
Um, it was fun. It would be a lot more fun if I had somebody that knew where they were going because we were just kind of muddling along, um, finding beaches and hanging out. And um, You were doing your initial recon for yeah. your next trip. We went to Pete's Puddle the first night for, uh, or um, um, what was it, Pete's Camp. Pete's Camp the first night for dinner. And we were excited because, you know, it's supposed to you know, be that legendary outpost with all this good food. And we got there and it was spaghetti night. Oh. And I'm like, I'm, in not Mexico. E- I'm not eating spaghetti in Mexico. That's so but, sad. I know. We, the, hey. Most of the towns that we kind of hubbed through were, were Baja 1000 towns. And so they had a lot of infrastructure. They just, nobody was there that time of the year. So we found a couple breweries and a whole bunch of Canadians. <clears throat> A whole bunch of Canadian sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is on the beach, just across from our hotel. We, uh, I didn't want to camp in Mexico without a group. What kind of issues have you had with the discos on adventures? What kind of abnormal? I've had Land I've Rover had, specific they, types. They of stuff? have been super reliable for me. Um, I had once where the interlock on the automatic shifter, the brake interlock solenoid stopped working. Okay. So I popped the cover off and shoved my pocket knife down in between the solenoid to move it out of the way. I mean, um, (laughs) yeah, I've had, I don't think I've had anything that's left me on the trail. I lost a water pump once when we were taking the kids to see Santa Claus and that was almost horrendous because we almost missed Santa. Um, you, that, you would have had wait, to hold dress on. up. Yeah. That's the story where you were rescued by a Land Cruiser, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> oh, he, so, he, I mean, if you're going to be rescued, you're yeah. going to be rescued by so, a Land So my, my buddy Jeremy, who has multiple Land Cruisers and no kids, but a lovely wife, I, I knew I could call him and he'd swoop in to save the day. And so he basically picked us up at a subway and he stayed with the rover while triple a came to get it and we took the land cruiser on saw santa had dinner and we almost beat the tow truck back to our house (laughs) and so you know he he drives it off the tow truck pulls it in my garage and and then from there i proceeded to go to the garage and install the water pump because i had a spare (laughs) <laughs> and he was so pissed the next day that I came to work, and it was uh, it was in the parking lot before he got to work. <laughs> right. So that I feel like that's part of your preparation, though, is you always you tend to have spares. Spares are cheap. I mean, a water pump <laughs> at the time was a hundred bucks. Yeah. You know why? Why would you not have a water pump? Um, I lost a motor mount once in Moab, but I had a spare motor mount because they were like 30 bucks. I mean, you had it with you. Yeah. I I don't don't, don't wheel with motor mounts. Yeah. It's sad. Well, you know, I was paranoid because you read all these things on the internet about how unreliable they are and all the things that could go wrong. And so I started squirreling away parts just so I'd have them. I mean, Usually they do me like, no good in the garage. So they're in the truck. Tie rod ends. Axles. Oh, I didn't get left on Drive the trail, shafts. but I it's did break an like, axle in Fly, uh, Farmington. In New we Mexico? broke a rear axle. Yeah, we were in Farmington. I broke a rear axle in a, in a gully. And because Disco 1s are full floater axles, yeah, we basically oh, really? backed down. Yeah. We backed down the hill, and I drove to the hotel and essentially front-wheel drive because the axle, one axle was broke. And uh, we were with a couple of Land Cruiser guys, and, of course, they instantly got on the phone to their Land Cruiser buddies in Albuquerque. And before we got off the trail, they had located an axle at a you-pull-apart place in Albuquerque and were racing yep. to pull it for me so that – they could meet me halfway before the day was over. So for $24 and I, like I got two axles. 
two. How many? How much money? Twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents. I got two axles and the bolts. And the bolts for less than twenty five bucks. Can't beat that. Yeah. Yeah, you can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. And and the Land Cruiser guy had rode his bike to work, his bicycle, and he had to ride his bicycle back home to get his Land Cruiser to get to the junkyard because all his tools were in the Land Cruiser. You know, <laughs> so it was this amazing. whole comical event of how they made it work. And and they presented me with the axles all rolled up in the sweatshirt. And so I, you know, we looked at them real quick and I wiped him down and I gave him the sweatshirt back and the guy started laughing. He said, no, no, sweatshirt comes with it. He goes, it was left in the vehicle. He goes, I just mm. found it in the back of the Rover. So I just wrapped him up in that. What was on the sweatshirt? So good. I don't want to know. I, I don't want to know. <laughs> okay. I, I like, don't want to ah, know. Please. I was like, it's gotta be some, some weird. If it had been like New Mexico, running lobos or whatever their mascot is yeah. i was like i might i might have hung on to that one but like yeah it's a it's a kansas city chiefs yeah it's halftime so not panicked and last time last time i saw we were ahead finally so not panicked I think yeah we're just using the most disposable thing so you uh you mentioned uh some of our favorite places to go we really enjoy upper michigan the sand roads and the beaches and uh the you know, like you can upper just... peninsula that everybody talks about? No, we never go to the UP. We always stay Traverse City and kind of the upper corner of the Midden. Mm. It's touristy a little bit, but, you know, still off the beaten path, so. Yep, 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 yep. Were you just up there? And there are. Yeah, always in August. Like the first week of August every year we go. It's been a family tradition since before I was born. Because I, I was like, I feel like, is that where the RV fiasco tire, was that that trip? That was on the way home. So we, uh, unfortunately, my, my uncle passed away. He was, he was older um, and not doing well. And so we did a funeral, a visitation, a funeral, a Michigan vacation, and dropped my daughter off in college in one loop. And... <laughs> On the way That's home, we were three days trip. from home. Oh, and we used the the camper as a U-Haul to haul all of our stuff to college. So, it was we. I had a blowout oh, because there was a screw in the tire. I pulled the screw out of one of the duels on the camper, plugged it, and then two days later, we had the side of the tire blow out. Oh. <laughs> There's that screw. Insult to insult. Yeah, but yeah. what I will tell you is the hydraulic leveling jacks on a camper are great for jacking your vehicle up. Because <laughs> they're already really there. Loaded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the back end of the thing is like 9,000 pounds. Oh, my gosh. God. Well, and your actual tire pressure gauge was working. Oh, that Amazon cheap tire gauge that you're showing there, I don't know, it was like 30 bucks. It's worth every penny. Because it instantly how, told me my tire pressure work? was low. It's a cap. It screws on. It's like it a screws nickel onto size. the actual like valve stem. Yeah, valve stem. That's it gives awesome. you temperature and, and pressure. I need that. This is amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to get that for the Lexus because it, it doesn't have like a TPMS like real time. Mm -hmm deal you know, and it, it it's says, pretty fast on real time and you can set the warnings where you want them oh so i have mine set at 50 tsi for the when it's in the rv and then if i put them on the rover i'll back it down to like 15 yeah like pa panic mode like his last yeah, yeah last available psi which that so. i definitely want to do that because i get really frustrated because i want to rotate the tires but then i have to reprogram the tpms yeah. sensors that are in the tires and so like my displays i'm trying to like always remember like one's always like one psi lower and i'm like which tire is that now because yeah. how many times did they if i could just change valve stem caps to the location then i wouldn't have to deal with that well um, when we bought the camper the camper was used i had a blowout like three miles from the rv dealership and so at that point i didn't realize the tire was low because duels mask that you don't realize it and then all of a sudden you had a blowout and so 
I was super paranoid about not being able to tell when my tires were low on the duals. So. Ross, you said you had to go. Yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, situation. So do me a favor, leave, but like leave the window open so it can finish the upload. I will keep my computer here. I have to, uh, yeah, got slight, slight situation. Kid, kid, go do kid. It's fine. No, kid, kid's good. It's house, it's, um, house things. Okay, well, good. Go, go okay. safe house. Anyways, Ron, <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, See you, Ron. Thanks. Uh, I, yeah, Chris, I'll, we'll do I'll it again text you later after. when there's not a terrible delay for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, now that he's gone, we can talk about... No, we're not going to do that. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So my next question I had for you was, do you have a, a list of things that you wish that Land Rover did differently? Because you've done so much work to them. So... So how we ended up where we're at now with the Disco 1, that's a 99 last of, and a Disco 2 that's a 2004 last of, that body style is because we didn't like the LR series. We okay. didn't like the fact it didn't have a rear tire on the back. Yeah. Because we feel like the rear tire on the back's awesome. And we didn't like the fact that you couldn't put bumpers on them as easily. Okay. Um, and so when Patrice gently suggested that I get a different vehicle, um, I told her I didn't like anything that was newer. And we had a little bit of a debate on a road trip to Denver, and we settled on I was okay with the 2004 because it had the actual locking transfer case, and it had the 4.6 V8. Okay. And the 4.6 V8 used to only be a Range Rover-only option. But 2003 and 2004, when the Range Rover had switched platforms, those engines became available for discos, and they are so much nicer, so much more horsepower. So you're telling me I need to look for 2004? So here's the problem. <laughs> here's the problem with threes and fours. Okay. And I, and I know this because I talked to a Land Rover technician at Overland West once, is that when they were gearing up for the – LR3s. Yes. They outsourced all of their engine production to India. Oh, and no. so the head gasket issues that everybody talks about are more yeah. prevalent on threes and fours because the tolerances weren't as tight. Okay. And so when they get hot, a steel liner will slip in the casting. So the 2004 that I have, I bought from a guy in Texas and you know, we were we were shopping all over the internet on the way to Denver, and you know we wanted either the gray one like Kyle has or one of these green ones. Right. Well, we found the green one in Texas, and it had an ARB bumper already on it, and and had seemed like it had a lot of newer things done to it. And so I called the guy and I said, "What's the story with it?" I said, "You're asking like seventy five hundred dollars for it. I'm just curious, what's the deal?" And he goes, "Well." He goes, I'm not going to just sell it to anybody. He goes, I put a little bit of money in it to get it on the road again, and I'm not selling it to a college kid or an old grandma. I said, well, I currently own two. And he goes, well, that might put you on the list. I said, well. <laughs> it might. <laughs> I said, I'm going to be passing through Denver or uh, Dallas on the way back from Overland West. I said, I will have my Land Rover in tow. I said, I'd love to stop and see it. And so I get there and it's, it's as advertised. It was, it was clean. Um, he said he just had the motor redone. I said, okay. I said, I said, I'd love it. I said, I want to give you some money now. I said, but I'll be back Memorial day to pick it up. So I gave him a, a grand to hold it for me. And I said, all right, now that I gave you money, tell me the story. And he goes, well, he goes in Texas heat. I overheated it. Didn't pay attention overheated it and then didn't stop driving it and he goes i destroyed the motor and so i took it to a local land rover mechanic who knows his stuff and he said the only way to do this right is to get a older range rover block and swap okay. all your components in it he goes because any of the new long blocks you buy are the ones out of 
you know, India. And so he's telling me the story. I said, okay. And then he hands me this file folder full of papers. And it's totaled eight thousand dollars for the engine. <laughs> That's pretty cheap. We were talking to a guy last week that spent like forty grand on his R two eight diesel swap yeah. groupie. So, but he's selling it for seventy five hundred bucks. What? What? Yeah, he sold it to me for seventy five hundred because that's what they're worth. Okay. And so at goes, least he's a realist. Yeah, and he goes, he goes. Now that I've told you the story, you can never tell my wife how much I spent on that motor, because she doesn't know. <laughs> oh my! God. And I said, I said, I said, why are you getting rid of it then? If you know, if it's fixed and everything, he goes, well, it took about a year to get it fixed, and in the meantime, we bought BMW motorcycles, and now we're doing that. Oh. And I said, and she says it needs to go because you're not using it, and he said, yep. And I said, oh. So it's literally a lifestyle change is what got you into that rover. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hold on uh, a second. I'm going to grab my, my charger before my laptop dies. Definitely. Okay. I'm going to get to edit this one. So much fun to edit. So much fun to edit. Yeah, Turn so his time. lifestyle change was uh, was my <laughs> lifestyle change. So nice, and it took me about a year to get a clean title on it too. So that was painful because it was Texas, right? Texas. Yeah, that sounds. They, about right. they didn't like the fact that it was double signed. So, is it supposed to be double signed, seller and buyer? It was previously signed before the seller signed. Yeah, it had like four signatures on the back. <laughs> it just kept because in Texas, in Texas, registration goes with the vehicle. You know, it's the yeah. inspection. It's not the title. Yeah, it was painful. Sounds about right for Texas. Yeah. You want to talk trailers? Yeah, we can talk trailers. Because ever um, ever since I've seen yours, it's had a trailer. Yeah. Yeah, so when was that first trip to uh, Western Kansas? Um, I can tell you right now because I got my Google yeah. Photos pulled up and it had a date on it. Yeah. Uh, October of 2017. Okay. So we were probably 2016 or so we built that one. Um, okay. The company up in Salina, one of my former uh, co-workers was working for them, and they were Jeep guys. Um, okay. They had they had an LJ. They had an AEV with a supercharger. They had a scrambler, and they, this was back when you know the the TV shows on prepping was big. And they're like, "Oh, it'd be great if we had a trailer so that we could just go. Everything's in the trailer." And uh, they were looking at old military auction ones and stuff like that. And my buddy who worked for him said, "Well, why don't you just design your own trailer? I know a guy." <laughs> and so, so Tell they everyone called talks me. About engineers, yeah, <laughs> I know a guy. They called me and chit chatted with me and said, you know, this is what they wanted to do, and that I had a lot of experience. They heard, and I said, sure. I said, I said I'd be more than willing to help you get started with building trailers. I said, you know, but I just want a little bit of money and a trailer, and so it was a beneficial relationship. So, um. They, I don't know how many they've sold overseas to because really? the oil field, oil field company contacted them about making, I think they made close to a hundred of them for them and shipped them overseas in containers. Oh, wow. 
and they had a Land Cruiser bolt pattern on them. Oh, and so that's why they're they're like, yeah, we'll just swap these around the oil fields. Yeah, yeah. The I, the, the trailer companies, it's kind of a, a modern version of the the two six or the four sixteen, um, with taller sides and an actual functioning tailgate and kind of all the things we didn't like about the little military ones that they used to drag behind Jeeps. Um, and it was fairly simple to build. Um, they're a fabrication shop, so they have lasers and press brakes and machining centers. And um, it was nothing out of the ordinary for those guys to be able to handle a project like that. So, Dude, My favorite part is they have not posted on Instagram forever. <laughs> like, I'm looking it, at images. It says 105 weeks ago. It, it is, you know, when you are a, a company that's what's considered a job shop company, you don't have a lot of experience with sales and marketing. No. You're making parts and pieces for other people, and sometimes the advertising side of it just slides. Um, they were official Jeep sponsor, Jeep Jamboree sponsors for a couple of years. Um, so if you ever see the white ones that are being pulled behind the Jeeps in the Jamboree, those are a couple of theirs. Um, it... Uh, I think COVID was pretty good to them also. I think they sold a lot of trailers during, during COVID. COVID times. Yeah. I like so, the white ones. I hadn't yeah. seen the white ones before. And I'd go really well behind that LX. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would. So, so um, it, and the thing I liked about this one, especially with your rig, is how high you had your tent up in the air yeah. for visibility. And just like when you park it, you're, you're already in the air. Um, I I am an engineer who likes to keep things simple, and telescoping slides or ways ways to raise tents up and down and the rattle and the shake that would be associated with that scared me. Um, I we we mounted the first tent high, and we took it out on a couple of adventures. And I went as I'm going through the trees, I could look out my rear view mirror, and because the tent was high, I could literally look underneath the tent. And it was almost like I didn't have a trailer behind me. And so it made life so much easier when we were going through the trees. And we said, well, let's just market this as a feature. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then when you want to get into the bed or the roll top, um, it's just easy because it's not like a tunnel cover where you got to fish everything out the back. It's, it's open on each side. Um, the, the owner of, of 2.0 had... Uh, a Dodge power wagon that had one of the roll tracks bed covers on it. And I said, why don't we put one of those on the trailer? Because those are so handy. They roll up on themselves. They're watertight. He called the company. I think they're out of Canada, called the company. And for like something stupid, like 50 bucks, they charged him a setup fee. And now they'll make covers for him at, at the regular cost. Oh, wow. And so... So, yeah, that's probably the coolest feature on that thing is the roll top cover. I mean, the timber and yeah. axles, the, the high clearance axles, that's multiple people have those. Um, they, they, the company up there made bumpers for buses, for school buses. And we literally stole that design for the rear fenders. I okay. wanted a fender that you could stand on. And it had to be a big fender because we were putting bigger tires on it. You know, most of the trailer fenders you see at at Orschlins or TSC or whatever are for like a 15-inch rim. We literally took the design of a bus bumper and cut about seven foot out of the middle of it and just pushed it together. (laughs) And then got you those fenders. Yeah, you can stand on them. They're nice. Yeah. So... My favorite part the, of the, the picture before is just you above all of the other Boy Scouts. <laughs> oh, I, it's great because we can haul a lot of the Boy Scout supplies and, and I'm always ready to go. It's just in the garage hooked up and, and you know, Kansas, it's hot, but there's generally a breeze when you're down on the ground. It's not as breezy when you're up in the air about six feet. It's much better, much more pleasant. Well, and you just did 
Didn't you just do a trip where you had two of the boys sleep in it and it was like yeah. 90 plus uh, with a It was. And they were like, it it's fine. We had, a, we had a ceiling fan. I took a box fan and strapped it up in the tent on the top and so it was blowing straight down on top of them. And they were, they turned it off at night. They got cold. Really? But, yeah. Those goobers. <laughs> Yeah. I did like their matching flannels too. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, sweet. We we did pretty much yeah. our time, man. Okay. Just the fact that Ross had to run away to go solve something. I'll find out later <laughs> what what he had to go do. It's 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 either internal or external to the house, and either one could be scary right now. Yeah.